so if you saw my video the other day about Vosh, there were a couple of caveats that I needed to make to that post. Um, me and Vosh are on the same side of the political spectrum as each other. We're, we're both left wingers, you know, and, and pretty much, you know, uh, not the biggest, not the biggest uh, cheerleaders for capitalism, you know, people that might not exactly have complete faith in the invisible hand of the market. You know, we're, we're both on that side of the political spectrum. You know, we, we each have our own, uh, way of having arrived there and, you know, have come to that perspective from a different vantage point. So when I call them our shared ideological adversaries, I am addressing Vosh as a comrade of sorts. It's just that a comrade that I'm not really, you know, in agreement with about this whole issue on feminism and about feminism. I've always been a bigger ally than than he is to the to the cause. I mean, I've got a history of donating to the feminist movement and everything. I've I've done a lot more for it than than he perhaps has as a person because his whole thing has been about trans issues. And you know, when he first came in, I was glad to see it happen, and I was glad to see all the other education that he was providing about like the history of everything that had happened about Co Intel Pro and everything else that the left has basically had to endure, you know, the sticking around by the CIA and and everything else that, you know, has been going on the left side of the political spectrum. But when I call him foolish, what I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not trying ultimately to, like, when I say that I'm out, I'm saying that I'm not going to participate in that community anymore with, with, with him despite the fact that we're on the same side of the political spectrum as each other, because of the fact that we're having this disagreement about, you know, women's issues and about feminism and, and you know, women and, and everything that's going on with, with them. We, we are at odds about that particular issue. But when I, when I call them our, our shared ideological adversaries, I'm shifting to the mode of, of thinking about the fact that, you know, like even if a feminist happens to be a centrist or a right winger, then we're already at odds with each other you know, about our politics, you know, I hail from a more liberal interpretation of feminism, to say the least, and, you know, hail from the more left-wing side of the uh, side of the debate that tends trends more towards sex positivity and everything else, you know, although I will admit that that particular thing has done more for men than it has for women, unfortunately, and, um, women are the ones that have been saddled with most of the work of, of child rearing and everything else. And that's unfortunate, you know, it's something that I, I'm not particularly uh, thrilled to realize. Um, but brushing, <laughs> brushing all that shit aside for the moment, just to get to the point of this video, me and Vosh, we, we, we hail from the same side of the political spectrum, although we may be at odds about particular, you know, bits here and there. You know, there, there may be, like, between the two of us, narrow issues to whittle down, like, about the issue of women and women's rights and everything else. But the big thing that made me react the way that I did to Vosh was that I've spent a lot of time online as a debate person, a person that participates in political debate on the Internet you know, like, and it's not just here on YouTube, like YouTube is just one of those, like, for me, like this, this platform in particular has, has really been an example of Moza Isley. It's been really bad to say the least. I mean, it, it feels like some of the scummiest people come through here and are in the comments section. And I, I mean, I'm not necessarily talking about you, dear viewer, who's watching this video, but yeah, I've, I've gotten some of the worst. And I, I mean, I think that everybody has gone through that. And I'm not saying that, like, I'm some kind of special victim that's suffering something that no other YouTube has, <laughs> has gone through. I, I just, I feel that none of, none of us should have to endure that. And I'm sorry that if it happened to you as an, a fellow YouTuber, I think that it happens to all of us. And it sucks that we all have to go through this shit, you know, and that anybody that bothers to produce a video gets a lot of hate for doing, you know, entirely. I mean, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand why. I mean, I guess, I guess we do kind of all belong to a demographic that's a little bit more privileged than most people though. And that, you know, we, we do have computers access to them 
internet, electricity, and the ability to to upload videos. But I mean, if those people are commenting in the comment section, it's more than likely that they can afford, you know, a basic camera and everything else to come on here and tell us what they all think about, you know, about stuff. But you know, when I when when I talk when I talk about this and when I talk about debating online. I think back to the history of everything that I've had to go through as a debate person, and I can tell you that my experience has largely been that right-wingers, like, to speak of them as a demographic, are not at all adverse to advancing arguments in bad faith. And I'm not just talking about, like, the devil's advocate, you know, or playing that. These people want to win at all costs, even at the expense of honesty, you know? Like, if you watch a lot of, if you read a lot of the books that these people are attracted to, you'll find, you know, how to win an argument with a liberal, and and it will largely be full of completely underhanded tactics. They don't care. They don't care about shit like intellectual honesty, and it shows, you know, like, over and over and over again. I mean, one of the ways that you can tell that they don't give a shit about intellectual honesty, too, is that they're always accusing the left of hypocrisy, any person that's like intellectually honest would look at that and think, you know, two wrongs, like they don't make a right. And, you know, the thing that the thing that blows me away is that like the classic example to show you where the problem with with playing the hypocrisy card actually lies is, you know, say, for instance, you know, a person, you know, smokes cigarettes, you know, and smokes two packs of cigarettes a day. And that tells you it's a terrible habit. Don't pick it up. You know, I made a mistake to do this and now I'm addicted to it and I can't break the fucking habit. I have difficulty doing it. It's a struggle for me to actually, you know, assert my will in this department. I'm finding that the cigarettes are getting the best of me. You know, like if, if somebody says something like that, you don't go out and immediately pick up a pack of cigarettes to smoke it, you know, be, you know, because that person may be a hypocrite, but you understand independently of that person's innate character that they may still have a point and that's what really like got me after a while when it comes to all these accusations against the left of hypocrisy was this sudden realization that if i if i was intellectually honest it wouldn't matter whether the left winger was a hypocrite or not it, what the only thing that would matter is if the left winger had an actual point you can tell by the nature of a lot of what happens and when when one of them will shift the discussion to, you know, I'm not talking about X, I want to talk about or or about the the issue you're talking about, I'm talking about the nature of your character, and immediately your head goes to, well, that's inherently an ad hominem and off limits, you know, if you're going to be intellectually honest in this debate. I mean, any discussion about who I am at a moral level is just a red herring and a distraction from the issue at hand. You know, like, you can tell that these people don't give a shit about logic, they don't give a shit about honesty, that, you know, there are various telltale signs about the people on the other side of the aisle when they get in a debate with with somebody else that these people do not, they don't value intellectual honesty the same way that you do. They don't give a fuck about it. They don't, like... Their whole point for participating in that debate is to win and make you look bad. And that's it. That's the, that is literally the only thing that they want out of the whole thing. And that's what killed me about watching Vosh, you know, go to Iran. Like if it was a joke, it was a bad idea to be joking about, about in the first place, because it was like, you're up against somebody that's only objective. And this whole thing is going to be to embarrass you. And that's it. Like, they're not going to care if how they got there was honest, dishonest. You know, every person on the right wing has largely shown me that that's the nature of their character. Like, they they really don't care about actually winning the debate, actually making a point or anything. What they care about is making you look bad so that they can walk away and say that I won. <laughs> 